Hi, can anyone confirm if I'm audible? Yes, ma'am. Your, yes, your voice is just being lag lagging, ma'am. Something. Okay, is this better now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, now it's better. Okay. Um. Hello, everyone. I am Tayeba Khanum. I'm a final year electrical engineering student at ZHCT, and I'm also the coordinator at the site section at IEEE AME Student Branch, and also a Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador. Today, I will be presenting you guys on computer vision using Azure Cognitive Services, and I want you all to know that no experience is required for this tutorial. I will also be helped by Afifa, who is the co-coordinator at the site section. Afifa, can you give a heads up on your introduction? Hello, everyone. I am Afifa, and I am a third-year electrical engineering student, also co-coordinator at IEEE site. Okay, so Afifa will let me know if there's any problem with my presentation, my audio, and you all are. Feel free to type uh, your questions in the chat box, or uh, you can also unmute yourself and speak. Your voice is just being lagged uh, still. Um, is my voice lagging for everyone, or is it just for the one who's speaking? No, it's no man. Okay, Afifa, can you confirm if everything is okay? Your voice is fine, fine here. OK. OK, so let's begin, everyone. This event is uh, a pow powered by Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador, since I'm the ambassador and I'm also the coordinator. So yes, you all will be getting participation certificates, but you have to make sure that you are staying till the end. And uh, Microsoft Teams keeps a check on who is staying for the entire duration of the event, so please try to have a good connection. So today's agenda, we are going to talk about Microsoft Learn Student Ambassadorship since a lot of students asked me about how they can become ambassadors. And some of you also had questions on what this is. Is this an internship? And then we will move on to machine learning, computer vision, Azure and the cognitive services and introducing the computer vision API. Finally, the best part is where I will be demonstrating you guys with a hands on tutorial on Microsoft VS Code. And I will also tell you guys how you can make your Azure account. What is the Microsoft Learn Student Ambassadorship? Basically, as an ambassador, you get resources in terms of Azure credits. So these are US dollars in terms of credits. Maybe it's 100 or 150 dollars and using these credits you can use other resources including gpu instances and other things at microsoft azure and apart from that you get training in skills in techn technological skills through microsoft learning paths which are basically pdfs and videos and uh, you also get linkedin learning videos and similarly i think the best part is that we are a community of students who are interested in similar domains so i chose the domain as machine learning and artificial intelligence you can choose your domain as something else there are three types of domains um there's also data analytics there's app development and things like that and you all can collaborate on uh, projects and events etc and one of the best things is that you also get uh, the free exam for micro Microsoft technology certification. Basically, you don't have to pay for that exam. And then when you get that certificate, it is quite useful when you're applying for jobs. And there are other uh, softwares too. You get the TechSmith software with the Camtasia software. I'm sure you guys can have a look about these softwares and then check whether you need them and use them. And how do you get, get the Microsoft Learn Student Ambassadorship? Uh, you have to fill up a form on the ambassadorship web page. You have to fill up your basic details, and then you have to write a couple of uh, questions. You have to answer a couple of questions. And you also have to uh, make a video of yourself speaking about how you can aid technology and what technology means for you. The question maybe differs, but that is how they assess your skills and your readiness to be a part of this program. And I do want to inform you all that this is not an internship. This is not an internship. You are just getting resources and being a part of this large community 
it is quite a rewarding thing moving on because today's uh, topic is on computer vision i want you all to have a slight idea on what machine learning and computer vision are basically machine learning is a branch of artificial intelligence right and uh, can anyone tell me what is machine learning if they are familiar with it and i would suggest first year and second year students to speak up uh, it's a model which learns uh, with experiences uh, based on the data we give okay that's right so yeah basically these are algorithms whose performance are improved as we give more and more data and then computer vision is a field of artificial intelligence as well as machine learning that trains computers to interpret and understand the visual world so basically computer vision uses image and video data and it is similar to giving visual uh, visual interpretation to uh, to the machines just like we have in our human eye so using dig digital images and cameras and stuff uh, machines can accurately identify and classify objects and then react to what they see at in computer vision moving on uh, everyone thinks that computer vision is a subset of machine learning and deep learning but i also want you all to know that computer vision is more than that it also involves other things like cameras geometry image processing etc so it is a subset but it also has other things and i think this graph can typically um demonstrate a good enough representation of how it is is there anyone who has worked with computer vision projects and stuff uh, students from the first and the second year please feel free to speak up okay that's okay um we all can move on and you guys can learn today what it is so basically this is an example of computer vision uh, in autonomous driving vehicles and self driving cars we use computer vision to see what's ahead in us uh, so the machine can detect a car a truck uh, traffic lights etc traffic signs and then make uh, help the machine help, help the car make decisions while it's driving similarly uh, forest fire predictions using computer vision so image processing is a huge uh, is a huge part over here but then along with computer vision our models can be trained to ac accurately segment the areas of fire and also segment the areas of smoke right now in these images you can see the areas of fire accurately segmented one thing that computer vision also does is it reads the text it reads the text properly through ocr text recognition and stuff and then uh, basically the, this text can be converted into pdfs or can be converted into speech uh, with nlp and can basically aid a multiple uh, number of processes happening in our day to day lives with that background let's talk about uh, microsoft azure which is the core crux of what we are doing in this tutorial today so it's a cloud computing platform and cloud computing is delivery of different services such as data storage databases and services through the internet so you all are familiar with google drive right we upload our images on google drive and google drive basically backs it up and we don't have to keep them on our devices and google drive is a very safe space to do that using the internet so azure is an example of a public cloud similar to that and with the public cloud what we do is we can all our hardware software and other supporting infrastructure is owned by the cloud provider so basically you can access these services and manage your account using just a web browser and you can connect your devices to the cloud using solutions etc and this is all about it you can and microsoft azure has a number of um, number of applications especially in the iot industry when you can connect your you can collect data through several sensors and just upload it on your uh, platform cloud computing platform and then use it azure cognitive services is basically azure cognitive services is basically the use of advanced technologies to simulate how people think so um basically the goal of cognitive computing is to facilitate the development of intelligent applications without any programming expertise so i'm guessing since you all are beginners and uh, most of you are not familiar with machine learning and computer vision what you can do is you can 
use these services without the need of any extensive programming and you can use these services in your project. This tutorial is thus focused towards those developers who actually want to use machine learning in their products but do not have the background. And these services thus help developers integrate AI tools such as computer vision, natural language processing, etc. into their apps without explicitly coding. So let us assume that you have a, a face detection module. You are creating a face detection project. You do not need to build a model train it on a large data set, optimize it, or fine tune the hyperparameters. All you have to do is install an SDK, upload an image, and you will get the output instantly. It is a matter of 10 seconds, not more than that. Okay, so uh, currently Microsoft Azure offers three, four kinds of cognitive services, the vision API, the language API, the decision or the knowledge API, and the speech API. So starting with the, before we start with APIs, we can discuss a few benefits of APIs. So an API basically has this advantage that it, it gives you a very clean and a very well-defined interface to do your analytics. So it is simply just a URL command and you are done. It also provides you stability. The algorithm or the input data can change, but the API endpoint will always remain the same and it checks your data and requests at the door. It is basically very easy to use and uh, it is a well-defined uh, interface be beyond that. So yeah, no, not corresponding to the specification will result in an error. So yeah, it's like well-defined. And finally, one really important thing is that it is reusable. So it allows your model to be used by multiple applications at the same time from any language so even if you're not familiar with python right today i will be programming in python but if you're not familiar with python you can find many open source codes using other languages such as c or c plus plus java whatsoever whatever suits you now we are talking about the apis and first i'll talk about the vision api so under the vision api we can do three basic tasks which is analyzing an image, customizing image recognition, and detecting people and their emotions using the face API. For example, if you want to create the software of a self-driving car, like I described earlier, you can use the computer vision API for understanding the objects in the state in front of you, and it could be cars, two-wheelers, humans, etc. Similarly, when we talk about com other computer vision APIs that we have for specific purposes, we also have the text, extra text extraction API. Basically, uh, in Azure, text extraction works in handwritten text as well. So normal services such as PyTesseract, if anyone has heard of PyTesseract or used it, uh, please unmute yourself and speak up. Okay, that's okay. So basically, PyTesseract also is a similar kind of a thing, but it needs printed text or proper computer font text for, uh, for detection of text, right? But Azure Text Recognition, OCR, can even recognize text from handwritten text or anything. So, you know, you can do things like you can uh, create projects in which handwritten assignments can be converted into text, and then you can implement a plagiarism checker on top of it and even integrate a keyword search. So you can imagine that uh, in, in a school, basically this will make the task very easy for teachers in a school where they would, uh, where teachers would not have any uh, expertise in machine learning or computer vision or image processing. And all they will have to do is just a one API call and the result will be in front of them. Similarly, image understanding uh, for, is for the context of the image, like what's going on in the image and, and can detect up to like 10,000 classes. We are going to do image understanding. I'm going to show you the code of image understanding today and we're going to uh, see what kind of image it is, what is it describing, are there people, are there objects, and does the image have any offensive content? So yeah, there are a bunch of things we can do over here. And coming to spatial analysis, basically spatial analysis tells you about how many people are there in a particular room, at what distances, and can also detect, you know, face masks and stuff. So you guys must have seen that during the pandemic, several students created face mask detection projects. 
and basically the Azure Spatial Analysis SDK takes it next level where you simply have to upload a video feed of the CCTV camera and link it to the SDK. Then it will tell you everything about the number of people in the room, their social distancing, masks, etc. So it makes very easy for you to do this without training a model, without doing things and this is a very and it could be a very handy easy project for beginners. Finally, I'm going to talk about flexible deployment, but not in the context of analyzing content with the images and videos, but uh, in the context of GPUs and processing powers. So all those who have a DevOps or web development background, is there anyone over here who has done a little bit of web development and uh, knows how it is performed? Any Anything about web development, if anyone can speak up? I have a very little bit experience of web development means uh, how can we write a program on within website with the help of that. OK, from, yeah, like from true. development back end. Yeah, so people like uh, people like you who are experienced in web dev or at least know a little bit, you guys might be knowing how difficult it is to upload and get a machine learning based instance running. So machine learning ke liye web development becomes even more difficult, particularly because for machine learning uh, algorithms, we often need GPU powered instances and GPU is really expensive. So basically it's like, for example, if you are doing an object detection project for a self-driving car, you need to have speed more than accuracy because you are driving the car in real time. You need to get your results in real time. So over here you need to have a lot of a, a very good amount of speed and speed heavily depends on the processing power of your machine. So whether it is a CPU or a GPU, it heavily depends on that. So basically in such a case for a self driving car, we would prefer using GPU instances. GPUs are basically graphics processing units and these are uh, quite much faster than the CPU central processing units that we have in our machine. So these, are, these can basically speed up the process for real time detection and it would literally cost you around five to six, 6,000 a month if you do, uh, if you actually, you know, hire a GPU server or something. So instead of, you know, hire, training the model and hiring a GPU server, you could simply use the Azure SDK and then basically work around with that. So yeah. Before I demonstrate you all about the APIs that we have, I want you all to look at a few examples. So I will show you some examples on what we can achieve with these APIs and then I'll demonstrate it live. So firstly, we have a text detection um, API which we're using. We have a text on, on the top left corner of the screen. This test, uh, text also has some uh, random red circles, but we are so glad that the API could distinguish between the text and other noise that we have in the image. And basically, we generated this detection below and it basically detect the detection happens line by line. So it is literally perfectly line by line detection. And you can see how pretty much uh, accurate this is. Even the capital letters and the small letters, everything is pretty accurate. But this is a printed text, right? So I am going to demonstrate you all on handwritten text and we'll see if that is going to be much more exciting. Next, we have object detection. So currently we have this um, road in which there are basically a lot of cars and this is yeah something from the back rear window of a car and basically there are a number of objects so one of the two things that our object detection API does over here is that it not only tells you the uh, what kind of an object that is, but it also tells you the location of that object in coordinates. So basically it is telling you the coordinates on top and then it is telling you the objects at the bottom and then we also created these bounding boxes. So there's another function we have to write for bounding boxes and that is also very simple. I will walk you through the code step by step so that you'll understand how we can do that. And I want you all to also focus on the fact that not only is our bounding box detecting vehicles, but it is also detecting a uh, street, highways and roads. So there's a difference between the street, highway, road, and basically it is detecting that, okay, this is there, this is there, and then even the outdoor part. And 
with a confidence of uh, let's say 99.92% for a vehicle so what do we mean by confidence confidence over here and is widely used in the machine learning community to refer to the fact that this is the accuracy so it is detecting a vehicle with 99.92% accuracy and similarly it is detecting a family car with uh, less accuracy which is 88.03% accuracy so if anyone has any questions at this point feel free to tell and what type of coding uh, does this type of uh, detection uh, is including yeah yeah okay so what type of coding um, i know this is something which you will understand much better when i demonstrate it live on vs code and you will have to just wait for a few more minutes but i can tell you that if you know python and you are familiar with a few libraries in python then you are pretty much good to go you can understand the code very easily i want to know if there is anyone over here who has uh, no experience with python or c is there anyone who doesn't know c or python at all python i don't know uh, python and c at all I'm just okay, that's it. Yeah, I also don't know about it. Okay, that's okay. You don't need to worry. First of all, I think C is taught in the first year class, and uh, I do know that we don't have strong fundamentals of C through what's taught in first year. But I can assure assure you that Python is very easy to understand. If you want, if you're interested, it is very easy. and uh, doing more of projects will make you will help you understand it better so don't worry i will walk through the code with you uh, so that you understand it word by word and you can feel free to ask me if you don't understand it so yeah this was okay is the, uh, was there anyone who wanted to tell something please feel free to say that Okay, I'm moving on. So currently we have this picture of Rome. Uh, can you please show the previous slide, please? Okay, yeah, sure. Why isn't it detecting the man with the sofa? I just want to ask that because it is also yeah. an object. And yeah, that is, is a very good question. So we can tell this that this is an error by our model. Okay, so. uh well you know like usually what apis do have is they they definitely have uh, the i think they have around 10000 classes as i discussed they have around 10000 classes of different objects and currently it is not detecting this so far so this is definitely an error by the api so uh, usually this error is not uh, this error is not prevalent but you will find that every single image you give it will not predict everything so this is where i tell you that the research community is still working on machine learning is not yet perfect computer vision is not yet perfect if you pick up a picture which is more difficult but if you take a picture of an indian street for example then it will not understand a lot of things on the indian street because there are a lot of different objects right so i tried and tested with a lot of different images and i could see that our machine learning models whatever is developed by you know even microsoft and stuff uh does is not every time accurate but it just does try it best so that is that and um okay let's move forward so ma'am ma'am for thank you very much we will have to work with i mean the particular um, race which were the sends and receives back accordingly it uh, understand that there is a some object or not so can can you repeat your would, uh, question i mean how it uh, it uh, understand that there is some object only when it uh, suppose if it sends infrared radiation and after it reflects back to the machine then it will understand that there is some object kept there so on this concept only we are working no ma'am if you go at mechanics no level. no no okay not at the mechanics level so okay uh, i will give you a little bit of hint on how machine learning works so machine learning is like we students what we students do is we study for an entire semester and then we give an exam and based on and then 
on the exam we have like we we get our scores so basically uh, if someone is getting a cpi of 9.5 on 10 then that person has a very good performance right so this is how a machine learning model also works a machine learning model is trained on data for a certain amount of time so you can imagine that like you're studying for for the entire semester and then you are giving an exam so similarly a machine learning model is trained on data for some time it is trained on a huge amount of data through that data there are a lot of things that are that are happening inside the machine learning model such as feature extraction image processing all of that a model is trained on different types of data so that it also becomes robust so you will train it on on different types of cars so that it understands that okay this is also a car this is also a car and then so yeah that that is what is do, uh, done while training so you're training a model on that and depending on what your model is trained you can give your output depending on that so if you're training your model only on the images of cars you cannot expect your model to know what a sofa is right so after the training is done you will give an image of a car and then it will guess that yes this is a car and if you give an image of something which is not a car then it should be accurately guessing that yes this is not a car so that is how machine learning works and i think that can clarify your question or do you also have some doubts still ma'am let me get one doubt yeah i have one yeah ma'am uh, if we uh, uh, if we put that uh, this sofa in our library of python then uh, it can easily be uh, include in this or not even after yes, it is course. not of course uh, this this sofa is definitely there in the training data so like the sofa would have been there in the training data uh, because uh, object detection uh, as i mentioned in one of the previous slides i think yeah it has more than 10000 concepts so basically it is trained on more than 10000 you know objects so the sofa must have been there but the sofa not being detected over here or the human not being detected over here is definitely because the model is not perfect right okay okay yeah okay and yeah so like basically you can always so you know machine learning is a is a research area for this very reason that every model is not perfect and researchers still continue to work on perfecting these models uh, i think someone else was asking before this uh, that uh, whether uh, the objects are detected through the uh, intensity of infrared waves uh, detected and i don't think that is the case so. yeah that is not the case it is definitely not the case because uh, when you talk about infrared waves and stuff then you must be knowing that you need to have some devices that can sense the infrared rays right so you will need to uh, you will need sensors for that and we do not use sensors in our machine learning project ever so like that that becomes a part of you know internet of things and iot and hardware embedded and stuff if we are talking about sensors machine learning is basically pure software and we only get images and videos as our primary data unless we want to you know include other metadata and other information about it but yeah so like that is not the case definitely not the case do we also have more questions uh, so, i had a question about phase detection uh, because yeah, uh, you said uh, this model is not working properly on indian roads same goes for the uh, phase detection also i think uh, okay so what do you exactly mean by phase detection so like uh, yeah of course i mean if you are giving so how phase detection works is that basically if you have a model and if you are training it on different phases and you are telling this phase is this phase is this basically the training data has a label as well so if you are telling that this is my face and then the name of this person is x then the model will be able to learn that this is the face and the name of this face is x but unless you you know you give it that label it will just identify it will maybe just identify you that you are a human when like basically when you are training a model you can do a lot of different things you can do something like differentiating between a human face and a dog face and you can also do something like naming every face identifying whose face this is we will also talk about this identification of the faces uh, in one of the uh, next slides i'm going to show you in one, in the code okay so 
that will be more clear. Uh, I, I just wanted to get some idea about uh, like uh, percentage wise. Could you give a number as to when you tested it on the Indian roads? Like what percentage of objects did it uh, detect? OK, right. So uh, I will I can tell you that I did not. I tested it on an Indian road. And the thing is that when you have a very busy street, um, I think it could detect the objects that were very much visible. So the problem is usually of occlusion. Occlusion is basically the human. Uh, so in this image, you can see that the uh, the sofa over here is not occluded at all. It is completely vis visible, but the human is occluded. So what usually happens in very busy roads and stuff is that a lot of objects get hidden and that creates a problem in detecting diff very diff different types of objects. So basically what the model was doing that it could predict uh, very very well with a very great accuracy those objects that were completely visible like there was a car in front of the road so that was perfectly visible and there was a car uh, which was pretty much not visible only some part of it was visible so you know it also makes sense that if there is a car and uska only 20 percent of that car is visible then how will a model detect that right because the information is not completely represented in that image. So it makes sense about how our machine learning models work. If the, the things are a lot more crowded and occluded in uh, busy Indian roads and stuff. So I think we can I can show that to you uh, in real time. Uh, I can download an image from the Internet and then, then I can uh, run the code on that and then we can see what's happening. Does that work? Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah if you have time, please do that. Thank okay, you. OK, great. Um, do we have any more questions? Yeah, I'm going to ask a second question. Can I ask? Yeah, of course. Then uh, in, if in this model we are having the error of not detecting the objects like human beings and so far that are not listed on the data. So what is the self driving car going to do? Is it going to hit the object? Or is it going to dodge and take precautions of not hitting the object? What is it going to do? OK, yeah, that that is a good question. So uh, firstly, yeah, uh, I think your question answers the very fact that because our models are not perfect and are still imperfect, this is the very reason why that self-driving cars are very rare and there are, they are not there in the Indian market and currently are there only by Tesla, right? So one thing that I want to tell is that Tesla doesn't only rely on computer vision. It relies on sensors as well. LIDAR is a very famous sensor if you if anyone of you knows about it. So LIDAR is a very uh, reliable sensor, which I think Tesla also uses or maybe other uh, com other companies also use it. But uh, the thing is that when we are talking about self-driving cars, then currently I, I actually have been through a research in, in which basically what they were trying to do is that before a car comes into the picture, so basically if you're trying to you know take a turn, if you're going to take a turn after like five seconds, so your model could predict that there is a car which is going to come in five seconds. Like I could see there was some some sort of a research that was happening to for cars to predict what is going to happen in the next five seconds. So basically what I'm trying to say is that um, it will not hit. It would definitely not exactly hit. Uh, because you know what would happen is that maybe when the car becomes comes closer to the sofa then it would identify it and then uh, you know they, they it might probably put a break over there like at a very late instant but yeah like it def definitely does not uh, hit and you know kill people on road or stuff so yeah yeah um, it's quite kind of satisfying yeah, thank you for that. Um, we can all have this research uh, on ourselves. Like we can go back and research on what's happening and what's Tesla doing about it. So let's move forward. This is the last part where we are going to talk about image analysis. So currently we have this picture of Rome Colosseum, right? So we're going to see what are the kind of different things our model could see in this image, right? So, okay, see, 
firstly uh, like our um, our model could basically the azure s api could basically predict a lot of things so starting with it being an archaeological site it being a historical thing ancient history history site so basically it could identify that this is something which is a part of history and you know like it's, it's an archaeological heritage site and stuff along with that it could test uh, positively that definitely it's an outdoor uh, outdoor scene so basically that the distinction is coming from there that it is outdoor it is an archaeological site it is a building it has a sky etc so getting the tags is the first task the second task was categorizing for the image so the categories the three different categories it came up with that was outdoor building and others so others is uh, not something which which is which is basically something not defined and then lastly uh, what azure apis can also do is they can combine all of these information together and put it over here in the form of a statement so it can give you a statement that it is an ancient city which has many ruins with colossum in the background and the confidence is 33.8% so even though the confidence is less but let's just see that it is it is predicting it right so it is not very sure of how much uh, you know like it is basically telling that i think it is colossum and it is basically rome but i'm not sure of how confident i am like how correct is my answer but i think this works for us like it it definitely works in our case so that was about that image does anyone have questions okay let's Okay, yeah. Image processing. Can you uh, tell the algorithm to calculate the distance between an object? The algorithm to uh, calculate the distance from an object to an image. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so basically this is a part of 3D computer vision. This is not something which is there in basic computer vision. Uh, basic 2D computer vision does not do that. but uh, since i do have a little knowledge on 3d computer vision i have done an internship in that case so i can talk a little about how the distance is calculated basically uh, firstly uh, as i said lidar sensors are used for that lidar sensors are very good at uh, sensing the distance but using stereo geometry in computer vision if anyone is familiar with these geometrical terms this is where we come to uh, we leave the machine learning part and we come to mathematics and geometry so basically what happens is that if you have an object you can take the uh, you can take an, a picture of that object from two different cameras but these cameras should be closely placed right so the two cameras and the object can then create a triangle and in that sense uh, it becomes a problem of geometry where you basically have the distance uh, between the two cameras you know the angle and then you basically have to calculate the length of one of the sides of the triangle and you will be done so yeah that is that is something that is completely uh, different from what we're talking about right now it is a part of 3d vision and i don't think you need to worry about it plus it does require a very strong background in mathematics a very strong background in that but okay, in the I previous line the location was rated that the car located at this particular yeah here okay, only you know, object so you know what these locations are these locations are coordinates so there's this image which has i think this image has about um 700 800 uh, pixels in the length and then there are probably 300 or 400 pixels in the width so basically it is telling you you know the coordinate values uh, of every car and every all of that so it's not telling you the actual distance it is telling you the coordinate consider this image to be an uh, xy plane something like that does that answer yes sir okay it so we can do hands on now okay i am going to okay i will need to share my screen again i'm going to do that hi so can you all see my screen now yes ma'am yes ma'am yes. Okay so um I don't want you all to be intim is there anyone who has used VS code in the past 
is there anyone who's familiar yes, with this yes i have used it sometimes just for the studio yeah, okay. um, that's great so basically uh, i am assuming that most of you know how the vs code uh, front page looks like and this is basically the front page at vs code whatever you see when you open it and for those who don't know i am going to tell you how you can so basically when once you open vs code this is exactly what you will be seeing on your screen and then you have to navigate through vs code uh, so basically what you will do is you'll create a file uh, or you will basically open a file if you have a file created then you just only have to open this file and if you don't have a file then you will create a new file and this is how we can create this new file so i have created the, a folder and then i have opened that folder so opening a folder is also possible i have created the folder manually in my machine and then created new files in that folder right so i don't need this file now i think i'm going to work on the text detection part in the first phase right so i'm going to walk you through the basic features that i need for my text detection part so that i'm not coding a lot so these are the first four lines which are basically importing the necessary stuff from azure cognitive services so you can see from azure.cognitiveservices.vision we are importing the computer vision client the operation status code the visual feature types and the cognitive services credentials so basically these are four important lines that you need to put in right in the beginning when you are coding okay and this is something which we typically do not do when we are usually coding and now comes the next part from line 6th to line 10th we are basically importing libraries python libraries okay so from import array so array is basically a library that helps us you know deal with arrays os uh, stands for operating system because we will be accessing files from our local computer local operating system so we need os os will basically uh, be able to locate these files for us in my computer pil is an image library so pil basically helps us use images and work around images so pil has functions inside it for instance pil has uh pil image pil dot image has this function called open so that will help us open our image import sys sys stands for system and time stands for time like basically how much time it's taking and all of that so does anyone have any questions with the imports and the basic things uh are these public libraries because i imagine like all of this is i mean i guess you have access to it because you are in microsoft but no, the no, no. azure these one are those public, public? The, uh, okay so these are public libraries basically uh, you can copy paste all of this code and then basically put it in some other text editor like google collab or you know pycharm and then all of it would run run perfectly what i have is uh, the special thing that i have is only this part so this part about the subscription key and the endpoint is something which you will get only when you create an account in your azure stuff and basically you will have to um, create this account you have to create a resource you have to create an endpoint and that is how you will get it right and this is the part which, which i'm going to teach you at the end of this session how you can get your own subscription key and endpoint and how you can work with it and finally the last part is the computer vision client so basically what this client does is it identifies what is the key what is the endpoint and it maps our output to the endpoint and stuff so the point is that these first 18 lines is something you will be pretty much doing in every single project right it is basically just preparing your code to be ready for your uh, for using azure cognitive services is that okay now is everyone um, yeah yeah that makes sense yes ma'am okay. yes ma'am okay. my okay. other question is Yeah, ma'am. Sure here, ma'am, you are writing from from array import array. So instead of writing from array, if you just write import array, so what problem it will have? Okay, right. That's a good question. Usually, it does not create a problem, but it is a good practice to do this, right? So there are a few more libraries in which you have to. If you have heard of the TQDM library, so the name of the library is TQDM, but you still have to import TQDM from that library because the way those libraries are created, they the name of the library must be array, but it also contains a function called array, and you have to import it. 
so you can try working around with it but i am not sure if it would work perfectly so this is a good practice you should go along with this okay so i'm first going to print the fact that i am going to work on reading the file now so read file and that is that anyone has any idea on how we can read this file how can how we can read an image basically going to prepare a uh, yeah i'm go basically going to prepare this image path over here so if anyone has any problem in understanding what it is then please let me know reading the image path so if i'm not wrong this is the path of my image so i have to see what is the kind of image that i have what is the name of the image i have this folder of images and i am going to be using this particular image text.png from this folder i'm going to use it over here right so yeah okay also i think you might have this one question about what this dot is this dot basically means that you are Maybe. currently working in a folder and then you are basically going back to the source folder and then you are going into the images folder the text and then uh, iterating through the images and then seeing which file is the text.png file right so this is how we give the path of our input image in here then i will basically read the image using the library pil so basically uh, from pil i imported image and image at pil can directly read images through the open uh, the open command so i'm going to put open read image path i'm going to put rb rb is basically for reading it in a bytes fashion so yeah you might also want to put it let me know if anyone has any questions reading the response now i'm going to create this instant computer vision client dot read in stream i'm going to read in stream right and Okay. Right. So the line 26th line, basically reading the response, is something you will also be doing pretty much very often when you're working with cognitive services. You're just get, getting the response. Uh, so this is how you initiate the computer vision client to get the response. And then finally, we also have to initialize the read operation location. which is going to use the read response which we created and headers in the response if i'm not wrong right iteration i know uh, you must be feeling uh, that we you don't know about this how would you have coded this but basically when you're using these services you will have to go through the azure documentation and these are pretty much the basics this is how azure basically uh, people at microsoft azure have made the documentation and they want you to do this every single time you want to use their api right so now we are basically going to take the id off and use it to get the results the operation id um read operation location dot a very uh, common python thing so you can also if you know python you must be familiar with this um, now we are good to generate our stuff generating um detection okay generating detection below and i can put a few dots and right so before we generate the detection we obviously need to pull a while loop over here while this condition is true if the read result computer vision okay i'm going to create this read result called another client uh, and another uh, variable which is going to use the computer vision client right and it is going to do dot get read result get get read result 
right? Now take an input, the operation ID, which we created in the previous stage. And while this is true, this condition is true, you're going to put an if statement. If read result dot is, uh, that is, is equal to is equal to operation status codes. Yes, it is here. So you know everything is over here. I mean, you don't need to even type everything because things are already succeeded. Yes. So my VS code is smart. This is what needs to be put. And then now we are going to read the um, line. OK, so for line in text underscore result result. Yeah, it should be result. I think result lines print print line dot text okay and okay good so we're done with the while loop i think i don't know for text okay i think i missed something and i'm glad i did okay i did i think i did miss one for loop that was supposed to go over here for text result right for text result in read result dot analyze underscore read no dot not analyze underscore result I think it should be result dot read underscore results right okay this should work and there's an indentation error this is an indentation error I think this should be good to go the while loop. We'll see if we have any errors. We can obviously always work around with errors. Now I'm going to basically uh, what this while loop is doing. I don't want you all to be confused. So I'm going to write it call the get API. So get is the API, right? Which we're using call the get uh, get API. And wait for the retrieval of results and wait for the will of results. OK, so next what I'm going to do is I'm going to read print the results line by line because I want it to be. Print the results line by line. Please feel free to ask any questions if you have. Read results. Yeah, I mean, this is much new for us so we are just understanding I, what we are doing okay that's good i don't think you need to worry about any of this because um i am confident once you do this yourself you will understand what's happening because coding is not something you can obviously learn by you know seeing someone else code right so just try to understand the gist of what's happening and you will be very good to go i can provide you the code um i can put it up on my github and then you all can copy paste it run it once and then analyze what's happening and then work around with different images. Um, analyzed analyzed result. OK, that that is that should be fine. Reading the results, right? OK, great. Hmm. Or line and line. For line and no, for not line and line for line and text result because we have to print the result text result dot lines. OK, for text result, I think there is a little bit of hmm, read result dot status. Equal to equal to operation status codes dot succeeded. And OK. For text result dot lines print. And yep, I think it should be good. Print. Let's just print the entire thing. And oh, sorry. And then we can print finally that our detection is complete. I think this has a little bit of an error. Let's see. Okay. 
okay so i am concerned about one thing i am concerned that my code the if the if paragraph is not um, okay is not currently colored so this succeeded to should be in a blue color like it, it is over here and the operation status codes should also be in blue color so i'm not sure why this is happening currently and we will encounter some errors let's open the terminal maybe it's because it's after the while loop it should be after the while loop. Let's see, we're going to get some error and then we're going to see what the error is. How do we run stuff on VS Code? We write Python because we're obviously doing Python text detection.py is the name of the file. And let's see what the error is. OK, currently it's reading the file generating. OK, there is no error. Thank God there's no error. So yes, over here. This is something that I sh did show you in the PPT, but I'm going to uh, in the PPT, I'm going to show you another thing. I'm going to use this file now, the handwritten text, and I'm going to read this one now. So I'm just going to replace the text file over here, text.png with handwritten text.jpg. And then we are going to see if it works with handwritten text. Okay. Now let's see our terminal. Let's expand our terminal and okay. I'm gonna kill this terminal. Okay, that's good. Text. Okay, yes, it did give this error. Um, I'm gonna clear my terminal. I'm going to end this. I'm going to restart my terminal. Right, so, yep, okay, we have the answers here, right? So, what do we have? We have in our hand handwritten text. I will transcribe any handwritten notes, screenshots, text, images, statements, your diaries, etc. Right, so we do have the same thing. We have, I will transcribe any handwritten notes. Mm, okay, great. It is reading it. Right, and what we can do, one, I think I can do one thing over here. I can print the, um, let's see if I can do that. But where do I do that? The line bounding box. I want to do that. About here? No, I think not. Not here. Ma'am, I just want to know that uh, uh, it can detect any type of uh, language that we have written uh, as many uh, student or a person does not have same handwriting. So can it? Uh, yeah, right. Be... So the thing is that this handwriting is a pretty good handwriting, right? So this is this is detecting this handwriting perfectly. But if the handwriting is a little dirty, you know, you your it, it is a machine learning model, right? So it will give a little bit of an error depending on how different or how difficult to read the handwriting of the student is. Yeah, OK. OK, that's good. And OK, that is right. I am wondering if I've done this correctly. This is OK, yeah. So I think we are good to go. If anyone has any questions, you can obviously, I, I think I didn't put a break statement. OK, that's good. If anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. Now, what is being done in this while loop? Uh, can you explain, please? Okay, yeah. So the call, calling the get API, right? So basically, we want we are getting the results exactly in this loop, and this is like the most important loop over here, right? So we are using the uh, computer vision client which we created over here. Like we already have this client over here, and we are using this function. So basically what you can do is you can hover over all the functions when you're doing this on your own. This is a get result method, which is an already existing function and it's written like we have this description that this interface is used for get getting OCR results of read operation and operation location is what we basically uh, it, it basically retrieves the stuff from operation location. So yeah, that is happening. Basically, it is retrieving the stuff. It is reading the result. And then if the status is succeeding, basically, how does it 
check the status is succeeding it is making sure that the things you have your subscription key and endpoint and stuff is valid it is not you know like it is not an old key it is not an expired key th- things like that then if that is valid then for every text result in the read result it is basically then printing the rhymes so this read result contains all the information that we want and because everything is happening inside a machine learning model and what you see currently is just the face of an api call that we are basically calling an api you can't understand what is happening on the inside all you can see is that a variable contains the result and then we are printing the result to that variable right yeah mam can uh, one more doubt uh, can we uh, reverse this uh, is uh, Uh, we just put the uh, out, output inside this and we will get the image pdf um, yes you can do valid. that yes you can do that i haven't prepared for that yet but like um i did not i just prepared for this one but yes you can get the pdf thing like i think there's this, there, there is an api and you can have your own google search on uh, what kind of APIs we have, or you can go to the Azure documentation page, and I do believe that there is something which can help you getting the PDF back from the thing. Okay. Do we have any other questions? Uh, excuse me. Yeah. How many languages can it detect? Like, for example, uh, the image was having uh, English script. For example, yeah. if somebody has a, a Chinese script or uh, any other language script, so how can, can it detect other languages also? Okay so for i think currently um it can only detect english but you know it totally depends on the developers of azure so again this is something which you can google search about whether my microsoft azure cognitive services uh, support other languages in ocr detection they might be supporting some common languages so yes that is something which you can search for and i'm not very sure about it excuse me Excuse me. One more question, please. Uh, yeah. Suppose I have written Hindi words using the English letters. For example, mm-hmm. like hmm, H double O N. So yeah, will it, it will. That it will. It will detect it because it is not making sense of stuff, right? It is computer vision is basically do like whatever is there, they will detect it. Uh, it will detect that H is written and O is written, N is written, and H O N N are written together. So I believe it will. Uh, it will detect it. It does not care about. whether the paragraph is making sense or not uh oh. by the way to answer the previous guys question uh, i checked the documentation and for handwritten languages it detects english uh, chinese french german italian portuguese and spanish thank you so much who was this thank you sir uh rafe okay thank you so much rafe that was a great help no problem Okay uh let's go on to object detection i guess right let's let's do that i think um text detection handwritten text okay yeah i have created this thing for object detection right so again i'm going to kill this terminal because usually when you also have errors you can check whether your term- terminal is the one which is like a previous terminal or something and usually i do kill the terminal and then restart it so it works very well so again we uh, for object detection we are just doing we just using these two um basically the cognitive services client and the cognitive services credentials which we um, out of the four we use so we are just using these two and among the common libraries that we are using we are using pil we are using ios and then i think this bytes.io is a library which basically stores data in forms of bytes so it's easier for our systems to you know store data and stuff so you can also have this google search and this request is basically um, i think for requesting the image so yeah you can have your own um google search about the libraries if you want to know in detail one of the first things that i have already done over here is i have uh, i am going to use two different kind of images now right so i am going to use an image of a street so i'm going to show you the street.jpg image so this is the street right and this is a busy street so now whoever was asking that question that what it, the number of objects it will detect in this busy street let's see probably it won't be able to detect a lot of objects and another thing is that if you see this picture i'm zooming in 
it is quite a unclear pixel so uh, like unclear picture so basically the it's not a high resolution picture which also makes it difficult for our computer vision um applications to detect right so not having a high resolution picture is also one of the factors which creates difficulty in identifying objects so yeah we are going to work with this street image and then um we can work with some other image as well you guys can suggest what image you want to work with the other image that i'm using currently is this remote image which basically this image uh, is contained in the azure cognitive services sample so they use this is a sample image from their website this is how we give the image location in the form of a web link right and then i have just written down the type of vis visual features that i want of these images so i want the objects i want the tags and yeah you are familiar with the subscription key the endpoint and the client so let's get down to coding for the object detection but this is going to be a little longer i think this is going to be a little longer does anyone have any questions okay i will then get started right um yes. yeah Okay, so yeah. So firstly, I'm gonna do the bounding box creation, right? Like you guys see how we had bounding boxes for all objects. So let's see how we can create bounding boxes. Create bounding boxes. And define a function for that. Define function. Draw rectangle maybe because we're gonna create rectangles. and it is going to take two things it is going to take an object as an input and then the other will be draw you will know what draw is later on so yeah wait for that now we basically have to represent all sides of a box right so how do we represent that we will represent that using some inbuilt functions as well as um some basic math so we have so we have object dot rectangle so dot rectangle is basically an inbuilt um thing for the, for our input object and we can also so we will now define left we will define right we'll define top we'll define bottom i think okay sounds good and then we will finally define the coordinates based on these four coordinates and finally we'll draw rectangle i haven't completed the code in the left right part so don't worry so for left i'm going to define it as rect dot x x is basically the x coordinate and for right i am going to define right using left so it will be left dot left plus rect dot w dot w right okay and similarly i'm going to do with top and bottom top will be rect dot y and bottom will also be a function of top so top plus rect dot h h stands for height this is something which is very basic and if you are you doing object detection quite a lot then you will learn how to make bounding boxes using basic maths and then finally i am telling how we are defining the coordinates using all these four so i'm going to put yeah i'm going to put left comma right and then i'm going to put a comma and then i'm going to put right comma bottom no not left comma right it should be left comma okay so this is how we are defining our coordinates and finally uh, we are drawing the rectangle yeah sure so of this rect dot y then shouldn't bottom be something less than that so something like top minus rect dot h maybe um no actually uh, in computer vision how we do it uh, are you familiar with the library open cv by any chance okay so our coordinates actually start from the top left corner like this is the corner and this is how our coordinates start in uh, in most computer vision cases so even in the open cv library you see that our coordinates have a 0 comma 0 on the top left corner so that's how it is that that is a good question i'm going to put this color i'm going to use the red outline 
I think red is very distinctive. And I think we are done with the bounding box. Now we can um, get the objects, right? Get the objects detected. And I'm going to again define a function for object detection. Get objects. Result, comma, draw again. So draw is also this inbuilt function and you're just going to use it very often when you're drawing things. So that would be a good process. I'm going to put an indentation and I'm going to first, I'm going to print th something. I'm going to print something like the number of objects detected or the type of objects. So basically, I can just put objects detected like I was putting earlier objects detected with the colon. Now after this, it will print the details of every object that is detected. And keep in mind that everything, every string is to be put in a string or else obviously that would be a very naive error. So again, we have length of results dot objects is equal to is equal to zero. If this is the case, oh, I didn't put a colon, right? I didn't put a colon and print no objects. So if that is the case that we have um, no results, then obviously we're going to print no objects detected. But I'm hoping that our image after the function definition. Um, can you repeat your question? I think you forgot to put colon after the functions definition on oh, line 34. Of course, yeah, I do that too often. Thank you so much. And then in the else statement, I'm going to put for object in results dot objects. In results dot objects. Um, okay. Let's see. Um, for objects and results of objects. Okay. This. Um, we're gonna print again about. Uh, basically, we are now creating this statement. You know how we're gonna print and stuff. So let's do this. I'm going to use an old method of printing, but you can definitely use that method of printing in which you put F before the string. And I think that is better. But this old method is something which a lot more people understand. So I'm going to use that. So basically, I'm going to put four brackets over here so that everything you print is coming in. These four brackets, the object locations, and I'm going to put dot format using the old method of printing. And in the format, um, in the format thing, okay, so here I'm going to print object dot rectangle, uh, rectangle dot x, object dot rectangle dot x plus object dot rectangle dot w, and then again a comma, and then object dot rectangle dot y comma object dot rectangle dot y plus object dot rectangle dot x. So I think this should work and there are two brackets that is good. I think okay. so yeah in the same line of print we're gonna give this indentation right we are going to draw the rectangle now. We are using basically we are now calling the function which we created over here draw rectangle and we are calling the function. Now the function takes two inputs object and draw. So we're going to give the same inputs. Object and draw and then we are going to come out of this shift tab come out of this for loop print everything that's happening inside and then finally I think I'll print the bounding box this time bounding boxes. Okay, so basically the bounding boxes are drawn around the pop up, right? So I'm going to print drawn around objects. See pop up for that. So that everyone, you know, is reminded. I am reminded of seeing the pop up. And then I'm going to give another indentation and go back to the else loop. So I'm going to write print. That's it. Okay, this is good. This is good with that. 
we are done with um, getting the objects in this and then finally we will get tags okay great let's do this um now i am going to the third part the third part is print the tag from the images if anything is super fast or something you guys can tell me i'm just trying to you know um be a little slow even though i am slower i think you guys can tell me if it's super fast and here i am going to print the results with confidence right so this is how we print the confidence score print results with confidence i think i should put the word score over here it is good and then print again define that we are printing tags um and then start my if loop if um so what i'm going to do is if the length of results dot tags is zero then obviously no tags detected and then i'm going to put the else loop for the results so again um that is weird that this is if length of results dot tags and this tags 0 0 okay mm and no tags detected right and then the else loop mm okay great the else loop will obviously have this for loop for tag in um in results dot tags and again i have to use this print um okay with confidence i think if if most of you are familiar with c language so python shouldn't be that easy to understand given that it uses most concepts of free dot format and format opens up and then we go to the next line and then we write tag dot name and we write tag dot confidence confidence that's good and we obviously multiply the confidence by 100 because we want it in a percentage or else it's something like 0.8 0.9 something like that and then we end the tag and then we come back to the line of the else loop and then print all right so printing the tags from images is done and then i think this this should work let's see if it works Okay. Looks fine. Um. Right. So I'm gonna now go to the. Ma'am, what is this uh, last fourth line? Means. Can you tell me the line line number? Yeah, I'm at fifty nine. Fifty nine. Okay. So basically, yeah. this is this method of printing, right? Like um. whatever you want in the first bracket the first bracket will have the tag name and then the second bracket will have the tag confidence so it will print that car detected with a confidence of 98% that is how it was getting printed right yeah yeah okay 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 now let's do analyzing of images i am going to do analyze local image because i have two images i have a remote image and i have a local image so i'm going to mention over here that we are printing uh, we are doing the an analysis uh, analysis of the local image print function and yeah finally local image objects so initially what we have done till now these three functions are like the basic functions and we and since you guys might be knowing that whenever we are coding stuff then we are already obviously creating the functions in the beginning and then calling these functions at the end so i have created the functions in the beginning now i'm actually moving to getting the results part local image we are opening the local image in the same rb format and uh, then we are giving this image l is image dot open local image and then we are going to draw the image draw image image draw i think that is yeah that is correct 
dot draw and great so we have opened up the image in pil and then opened it up for drawing now we will call the api function api with the local image right so we are going to do results underscore local is equal to computer vision client how we were doing earlier computer vision client dot analyze image image in stream i'm going to use analyze image image in stream so that is what we're going to use over here and then it takes two inputs it's it takes the local image object so yeah where did i create okay this should be yeah okay that is good local image object and the image features do i have the image features yes i do have it and we are going to the next line i can i can put this down i think this is better results local and then okay now we yeah on line 74 shouldn't they be equal to after the so exactly okay. that is why i was giving getting that error i'm so sorry for making these silly mistakes and you guys are actually that's okay i'm glad you guys are catching on my mistakes objects so i'm calling the finally i'm calling this function called get objects that we created over here I'm calling that function and the type of inputs we gave results and draw are the two inputs. So we are using this input result local and then we are given draw inside it. And now I'm using the get tags function that we created. Get tags and in that as well we're going to give results local. I think yes that should be that should be good enough. Now I need to display the image because I'm, you know, like I just don't need a text output. I also need to display the image that we originally had with the bounding boxes. So I will have to open the image. So I'm going to open image L dot show. Right, and then print everything. Okay, works well. I think this works. Now uh, finally, I'm coming to the last part. So I did image analysis, and now I'm finally doing going to the last part, which is detecting objects. And right, so for print analyze remote image because I did it for the local image initially. So now I'm going to do it for the remote image that we have on the Azure web. And then yeah, print like how I did it. Print and then obviously I have to create this look uh, remote and then okay results remote. Results remote is this new variable. It uses the computer vision client as usual and uses the analyze image in. Okay, I'm not going to analyze image in stream because I already have it in stream. I'm going to just use the analyze image function. So this is the thing which is different from earlier. We used in stream and we are not using in stream over here because this is a remote image. And then I'm going to give the same same in, um, inputs, remote image, image features. And now I have to download the image from the web, right? So download and object image. Now I will be using the request function, which I had previously imported over here the import request function now i will be using it over here so yeah requests dot get a remote image right so i i hope this one does that and then i have to create image r so basically opening the image using bytes like we uh, i just installed the bytes dot io library bytes io right and then inside the bytes io i'm going to take an object underscore image dot content okay that also looks good and then finally i'm going to draw it so image yeah does anyone have anything to say am i creating some errors i'm not sure if i'm doing that again and this should work well i think okay right so i think we are literally we just have to write three to four more lines and then we should be done um so i've drawn the image now and finally 
doing show bounding boxes. So I'm going to use the bounding boxes function over here. We've used the previous two functions already. So get objects and results remote comma draw get tags and look at the yeah the tag takes results remote only that's good and finally again what i did earlier image underscore r dot show okay i am done now i just have to save my code works i'm gonna save it i'm gonna open anyone has any questions I feel like I have messed up with the indentation somewhere, but I'm not sure and I'm not going to check it. I'm going to wait for my code to give some errors. Let's see. Um, object underscore detection. Oh, dot py. Great. Um, let's see. Is it working? It seems to be working. Right. Okay, it, it did open this. Can you see the image? Um, it did open up in my screen, but I, I don't think I'm sharing it. Can you see the image? No, no, no ma'am. No, no ma'am, no ma'am. Okay. No. I okay, you can't see the image plus I have an error, so I'm gonna first rectify the error, what the error is in line 95. Let's see what I've done wrong. If you guys can catch my error, then please let me know. Does anyone seem to know what I've done? Okay, let's see. Line 95 has draw is equal to image draw. Oh, of course. I did not. Okay, I did not put draw here. I think this should work now. And I'm going to save and then I am going to run it again. Let's run it again. Okay, the local image is analyzed and okay, great. So both my codes are like both my images are working well. Now I need to share uh, like basically you can see the output over here that I have a taxi billboard traffic urban area. So it is predicting very well actually for that. Uh, just the, the problem is that it's not making enough bounding boxes. So I need to share my screen again. Give me a sec. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to share my screen again. Let me know when my screen is visible. No, I'm still okay, not yet. Oh, uh, looks like something is off. Only your cursor is moving. Man. Right, yeah, actually, um, I think, yeah, now is it visible? Yes, yes. No, okay, so now can you guys see this image, the image of a street? Yeah. Yes, yes, okay, yes. yeah, so uh, this is the, so basically what's happening is that it is detecting stuff. It is definitely detecting outdoor building, land vehicle, road, taxi, billboard. It, it is detecting everything, you know, like even though, even though the picture has, very low resolution and stuff but the uh, microsoft azure api is actually working great i am actually in awe of this api it is also detecting the sign it is detecting the mixed use it is detecting everything it's just that it's making only three bounding boxes around the human and the two major <coughs> the two major cars over here so yeah there was someone who was asking me about you know like the indian streets and stuff um do you want to try with indian streets now Sure. Okay, let me download something. Um, Indian busy street with cars. Let's take something with cars because it's just easy. I think my internet. Okay, that's like too busy. <laughs> um, will it detect this? I think it's uh, I I think it must not be familiar with autos. I mean I'm not sure because it's developed 
in um, it's not developed in India, right? So I'm not sure if if it's been. I think we can try that. Just okay, yeah, um, you, we can try. Which one do you guys want me to try? Just tell me. Ma'am, you're right. Ma'am, the right one. The one which is. The one which is open. You guys want to try yeah. this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's do this. Um, I am going to save it in the images folder. Um, in the image, great. Now let's try that. Um, please, my terminal. Now I need to. Yeah. Okay. No, I was here. No object detection, right? So I need to give it Indian Street. I'm sure my image is reflected in over here. Yeah, there is Indian Street dot jpg and there is Indian Street dot jpg. I'm gonna save it and let's run this. See what happens. Oh, it is. I think it is working pretty well. Okay. Um, it is not supporting. It appears the file was moved or renamed. No, that didn't happen. Why is it? It did show an image, but then it, I don't know why it just stopped showing the image. Let's see again. It is making bounding boxes around the auto and yeah, there's one around the auto. There's one around this car. And I can't see anything else getting detected using bounding boxes. But what I can see is um, right, there is a lot. There is a lot of detection, a lot of detection, right? Traffic. It is definitely def detecting traffic, which is a good sign. It is actually working good enough. I didn't expect it to work this good, but yeah, it is working good enough. It is telling you that it's a city. It is telling you crowded. I think this works great. What do you guys think? Yeah, ma'am, it's working very much great on Indian yeah. street also. Yeah, exactly. It is actually detecting with a good confidence as well. I'm pretty happy with how the APIs have turned out to be. I didn't expect it to be this uh, this great. Right, and so the other image from the remote uh, browser that I have is of this. Like on the Azure browser, they have this guy using a skateboard. So we also have this thing for him. Um, yeah, so it's like detecting sport, person, footwear, board sport, skateboarding, and extreme sport, kick flip. Okay, that's actually, I am actually impressed. It is also um, understanding what the person is doing, like basically kick flip and all of that, stunt performer. That is great. So I think we're done with object detection. The last part is image analysis, but I'm not going to code the image analysis part because that's going to be really long. So I'm just going to tell, uh, show you the results on the image analysis. I think those are really interesting results on Barack Obama's family. So do you guys have any questions till now? No, ma'am, just we will understand. OK, that's great. Let's go to analyze images. I think, yeah, this one, I've written this code way long back. It is uh, pretty long. It is lengthier than the other two. It has, I think it has 222 lines. Yeah, it is actually long because using one image, we're doing quite a lot of things in just one image. So yeah, let's see. I'm going to close everything else. And yep, this is done. I'm going to close this and save it, please. And yeah, OK, anyways, I'm going to also close this. And street, this is also done. Oh. Save it, OK. Now, OK, so what I have done over here in image analysis is something very similar. I have uh, given, I have basically done four to five things with one single image. So initially, I have literally defined the images folder and also the remote image folder, but I have not really used this remote image. So the first thing that we are going to do is uh, obviously the Obama image, the Obama image, we're going to load it and open it. And the first thing that we are doing is describing an image. So this is the describe image in stream uh, API that we're using. And the second thing is categorizing that image. So basically it will analyze the image, the stuff in that image, 
the third thing would be detecting the faces in that image so like basically it will tell you what is the age of the people in that image the gender of the Im uh, people so there is face dot gender face dot age face uh, and then the coordinates of each faces and then finally we will do this detecting of adult or racy content so if there is any adult content or if there is any racial content which should not be there then we will also detect that in the obama image and then we will detect the color of that image so we will detect what are the uh, very dominant colors in that image so if it's like a forest image obviously green will be the dominant image so uh, dominant color so let's see what will be the dominant color and along with that we will also print specifically is the image black and white so it will tell us if the image is black and white and the accent colors in that image and then the foreground and the background colors and finally the dominant colors and then after that we are going to detect whether there are celebrities in that image so we want to see if the azure api can detect uh, barack obama as a celebrity and basically do they have barack obama's face in their database did they train their model on barack obama does their model know whether it's barack obama and finally i am also using a landmark image over here so basically this is the landmark image which is an, an image of um, gateway of india that i'm using and apart from that this is the obama image right so we have his entire family and it would be great if they could predict the correct ages and stuff of everyone let's see and for the landmark we are just going to detect what is the landmark so we can see if uh, gateway of india is there in their database and how great is azure's api like if they have all these landmarks and i think yes the very last thing is we will be detecting whether the image is a clip art type image or whether it is a real image so basically i have a clip art i think i have a type image yeah i have this image of a donut which is a which is a drawing right so it's not a real image so we want our api to also detect whether this is a real image or whether it's a drawing image um does anyone have any questions before i finally run this code no, I am not understand on which process this is detecting um, or what's uh, the behind uh, backend process. This the backend process is computer vision, right? So the backend process is computer vision and machine learning. Uh, if you are not familiar with computer vision and machine learning, then I would suggest you to join Epochal. Epochal is basically, I think, have you guys heard of Epochal? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Okay, so let's do one thing. Uh, once I'm done running this code, I will be done with it. And after that, we can take up a few questions. And then I will also explain you about Epochal. And I, I will introduce you to machine learning. Right? Does that sound good? Yeah, okay, ma'am. Sure. Okay, great. Let's, uh, let's run this on the terminal now. New terminal. What's the name of this file? Analyze images. So I'm going to do this. And I'm going to run Python. Analyze images dot by great so it is doing the first description of an image which is basically yes it is descriptive and this is it is describing barack obama michelle obama and both his daughters and they are posing for a photo i am pretty glad the api works this great they are posing for a photo like it can also read the emotions of people and what they are doing which we also saw earlier in the skateboard person and then it is categorizing the image. It, it is a people group, right? So basically it's a group of people. That's very well. Finally detecting faces. So male of an age 49, of age 49. I'm not sure how accurate this is. I'm not sure how old Barack Obama is, but I think it is doing a great job at predicting very close values. So 13 for the girl and then 13, uh, nine for his other daughter and their locations. Finally, it does not have any adult content or racy content while, while they while it does show a confidence of 0.44 uh, it just says that it is false it does not have any racy content but the confidence is 0.44 it does it's it's basically not sure of it um and then yeah the accent color i think this is some color code which we can't read but definitely we can put it on google the dominant color is black, the foreground color is white, and dominant colors are basically black, brown, and brown and white. I think they're wearing, you know, even their dresses might be making um, 
okay why can't okay yeah i need to do this yeah so like there's a lot of white in their dresses and then there's a lot of black and then there's brown in their skin tone so that is that and okay that's about it they, it is also detecting obviously the, the celebrities all four names and finally for gateway of india it is detecting it as a landmark as a known landmark and for the donut image it is detecting it as a good clip art not as a line drawing so i think that is that works pretty great pretty accurate i am actually impressed by the level of accuracy with everything you guys can try stuff and does anyone have any questions then we can move on to the q and a and i can talk a little about epocal so that you guys understand what's literally happening ma'am is this api detect uh, these names of braco mama from their uh, social media handles or from their database only i think from their database so because the underlying uh, underlying thing beneath every all of this is machine learning so what happens is in machine learning is basically um you are training a model right so like it is t- basically while training they have told their model that this is how barack obama looks and all of that so yeah they have it in their database not from their um, twitter handles or social media handles yeah okay okay and does anyone else has any question maybe you can explain the detection part the detection part yes, uh, yes. so how is it literally I'm, detect yes ma'am mm-hmm. how is this working behind the api or in back end okay yeah so uh, i'm going to give one simple answer that this is machine learning right and as long as you are uh, not, not a little familiar with it that it will be a little difficult for you to know that but i'm going to explain you once again so basically how does facial recognition work or how does um, how does it know that it's a celebrity because uh, they are training it on these data sets basically it's training the model on the data sets of a lot of celebrities and it is also and each celebrity image has a label with that celebrity's name so that's how during training our model is knowing that this is the image this is the face and this is the name of that celebrity so finally the, the trained model is what is there behind the api so the machine learning model is already trained and it and microsoft people train it on you know state of the art models which are like literally the best models the best performing models and then these trained models are behind the api so the api is basically using the trained models in giving the output now if you want to know how the machine learning model is working i would suggest you to uh, if you're interested in knowing that i would definitely suggest you to join epocal which is basically a research society which we uh, which i created uh, at site for especially for first and second year students so that they can come and be a part of the society uh, first you guys will have like 3 to 4 weeks of learning what it is we will you will have mentors i i, I am also one of the mentors of the machine learning and data science society so you can get directly mentored from me and i will also suggest you the right resources to learn machine learning and uh, computer vision is also something that i do Uh, i'm really passionate about this uh, computer vision part of machine learning and data science so i would suggest you to join epocal and be a part of our society and then once you have learned stuff um then you can actually do projects with other people in the society other seniors and other members of the society and yeah that would be great does anyone have any questions Ma'am, how do you mean that? Okay, first, why don't Shivam you speak, and then we can move on to the other person who is speaking. Hi, Shivam. Uh, I think you were asking something. Yeah, ma'am. How to, ma'am? How to join that epochal group? 
uh, yeah uh, it is actually quite okay so epochal launched on 3rd of january literally 3 days back and we have uh, we had it all we had all the information on our social media instagram handle basically i triple e site amu i would suggest you to follow i triple e site amu on instagram we do not spam your your instagram don't worry about it we just put out the most relevant information out there because we are a research section the site section is definite only for research and stuff so um you you can find all the google form links and all the um, information documents about epocal on our social media handle right and you can also actually go through the website of i triple e site amu so the website also has some information but i would still suggest you to follow us on instagram because we just update everything on instagram more regularly more frequently and the website gets updated after only after a little while yeah okay and, thanks mom okay welcome and there was uh, also some other girl who was asking something yes i want to ask that uh, as you told about the microsoft azure how can we join this subscri subscription how can oh, we take right exactly let me share my screen and tell you thank you so much for reminding this um i hope my screen is visible yeah it's visible okay uh, i can't do this why is this happening it's visible yeah i know it's uh, i know it's visible i don't know why i can't um i think it's just lagging behind but anyways microsoft azure i'm going to basically uh, you guys must be having your um microsoft accounts right so i think you might need to create an azure account and or you can check whether your uh, microsoft account works so basically you have to sign in for that and yeah let me see so i can sign in with my student ambassador email because it gives me benefits of credits and stuff So yeah, once you have your okay, I need I need to go to the Azure portal actually. Right, I'm going to use this Azure portal. It's like basically that was the Azure website rather, but this is the Azure portal. So portal. Azure. Microsoft. Com, whatever it is, you can basically sign in on that. That would be better. And yeah, this is the kind of homepage you will be having, right? so i think it's taking time to load yes this is the kind of home page that you will be having and what you have to do is you have to create a basically resource right so first you have to create a resource and in the resources section i have to see what did i use i'm, I'm just trying to understand um right give me a sec Okay. Right. So basically, I had created this key, and I used it. I am. I actually forgot how I created it. So I'm just trying to recall that. Give me a second, guys. I am. Type computer vision. Let's see if computer vision works over here. Right. Yep. Computer vision. right so this is how you have to type computer vision uh, click on create and once you create it so i have the visual studio enterprise subscription because i am a microsoft learn student ambassador but most probably you will be having a free subscription which i think every student does get some sort of some something i'm not sure what that is called but you must have something and because you might be having a new account so you wouldn't have an already existing resource group i have these already existing resource groups but you might need to create new one 
so you will create a resource group you will um, probably name something i'm going to rg and i'm going to click on okay and then you are going to put your own region so we are in india that would be south uh, east asia i guess that would be southeast asia let me see if india is there there's central india you can use either of them it doesn't matter i think i also used australia once so i don't think it matters and then you can give a name whatever you want i think i named it cognitive api 25 as you guys saw i named it cognitive api 25 and then for the pricing tier you have to use this free f0 and finally you have to click on review uh, plus create and it will create it for you it will literally take like um Five minutes, not more than that. It will create this uh, resource for you. It will create this computer vision API resource, and then you will have something on like this. Uh, I name it Cognitive API 25. You'll have something like this, and over here, you will. Okay, so I choose the Central India location. You can also choose that. Over here, you will have this section on resource management, and you'll have keys and endpoints. So you have to. basically um, there are basically two keys you can use any of these keys copy it paste it in the uh, paste it in the vs code secret key point and then you have this end point then you can also um, basically copy paste it on the end point and then you are good to go and you must also uh, regenerate your keys if it's not working so i am also going to regenerate both my keys over here right So yeah I think it's done and I can stop sharing my screen if it if all of if all of it was um, understandable for you guys do you have any more questions Aisha Um can you please share GitHub link where yes, you upload I, have, code? I haven't uploaded it on GitHub yet but i will do something uh, i will upload it on github and then i will share the link on my instagram story on the not my instagram story but like the site instagram page and i can put the site instagram uh, handle over here i triple e and then you can uh, get it from the i triple e site amu this is what we are on instagram and do follow us and then you guys you yeah you guys can see the github link over there excuse me ma'am yeah uh i was wondering like how do we get started in this field like for someone who's a complete beginner like how do we step into this um you're talking about machine learning right yeah okay uh, as i answered earlier i think you need to learn right so and uh when i was a beginner i had someone who did help me who walked me through every basic detail and you know who help, who to, who told me which are the right resources and stuff so um the answer the simple answer is that you should join epocal a lot of students have asked me about uh, getting started in data science and machine learning you should join epocal the machine yes. learning society and basically we will give you resources and uh, hopefully i will also be mentoring you So yeah, I think you can get started that way. Okay, thank you. Welcome, and I'm free for questions. You guys are free to leave. Um, let me know if there are any questions. Uh, do you guys have a separate Instagram page, page, or should I just follow the I Triple E one? So the I Triple E AMU one is uh is a different one. We have a separate Instagram page for site, and that is I Triple E Site AMU. And our Instagram Instagram page is pretty pretty new, so we're just new to, on Instagram. So yeah, we do have a separate one. What is the username for the Instagram? I did one? put the username on the chat box. Can you see that on the chat box? Mm, just a sec. Anyone who has joined as a guest can not see the chat box. Oh, is that so? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Yes, so basically, yes. basically, uh, it is I triple E, uh, I triple E site A M U. Like, there's nothing complex in the username. And I think O just Sharma just did send us send us a follow request. Oh yeah. yeah. Basically, follow I got it. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So it it is simple. And if you still have any questions about the Instagram handle, then obviously you can email us at our uh, email ID from which you receive the link for this meeting. 
so yeah our email id is also pretty accessible yeah okay ma'am um, how can we get to watch with epocal uh for epocal as i said uh, there are a bunch of things that you need to go through the resources and stuff so let me do one thing let me share my screen and tell you again i can go through the ieee site website and then tell you how you can literally sign up for that ieee amu can you see my screen yeah yes okay so this is yes, the ieee amu website and this is the site section the website is under development and we are still figuring out uh, a lot of things on the website but it is at least ready for you to use for epocal okay so this is the home page the home page is just basic information there is a separate section for epocal and you should click over here so this is the google form that you are basically supposed to fill for registration this google form has a doc and basically this doc is over here as well so you have a google doc basically which i want you to read before you sign up for this so that you have an idea of what it is right so yeah this is the google doc it will tell you everything uh, it will te tell you everything that is at epocal and, and you there are a few faqs that were frequently answered so you can have a read you can go through it and then yeah at the end of the day all you have to do is you have to fill up this form for registering at epocal right and this this is the form also and make sure that both yeah both this form this epocal registration form and the google document are highlighted on the instagram profile as well yeah exactly and the thing is i would suggest you to follow us on instagram because on website we do not update the minor details like i would not be updating about the github link of this session on the website so if you do follow us on instagram that would be easier for you to get uh, updates on regular stuff and i think uh, we are good to go about epocal as well do we have any other questions is there any branch based criteria to be a part of ieee no there is uh, so do you want to be a part of ieee or do you want to be a part, part of epocal so like these are two different things Assume being a epocal. part of <laughs> epocal for epocal it is pretty much mentioned in this google doc that your eligibility is only dependent on you being a uh, currently enrolled as a full time student at aligarh muslim university that's it nothing else ma'am so we are we are need to be a student of amu right now right so i think you are eligible for it yeah okay okay great and one thing i do want to remind you about is that epocal is uh, pretty new right so we're also figuring out how do we go about things so i would recommend you to fill this form at least one week in advance if when you want to start working so for instance you want to start working on the 15th of january you want to start your research here so you have to be dedicated right so you need to know that you have a few deadlines and you will be free after 15th so i would suggest you to fill this form at least one week before the 15th of january so that we know uh, that you are interested and then it will we will take a uh, one week to get back at you you will receive the stuff uh, through your email id yeah that's that's about it and we have three societies at epocal the data science and machine learning society i am the mentor at the society and there are other two societies as well if you guys are interested feel free to check these societies okay do we have yes. any other questions can you tell about yeah, is it can you tell more about that? mlsa okay yes mlsa uh, so i think there were two people who were speaking so i'm going to uh, first talk about mlsa and then we can move on to the other question so uh, what exactly do you want me to talk about mlsa can you be like a bit more specific is it only for campus ambassador or something like that or the beginners could be a part of it to learn something new i when i applied for mlsa i was a complete beginner like i knew data analytics and i had shallow machine learning but i did not have any idea about computer vision at that time when i applied 
so i think what they are seeing is that you are basically motivated they want to see a motivation if you are a part of uh, microsoft learn student ambassador community then they are providing you with resources right free resources so they want to make sure that you are motivated enough to use these free resources and um, you know like basically excel you so you should do projects in collaboration you should host events at your university like i'm doing this one you should invite other people to the community so yeah that is that so like how do you showcase that motivation on your proposal like your application right so they do have i think they do have a couple of questions when i applied for an mlsa i was literally um, it was literally a year back more than a year back actually i applied in november 2020 and uh, so i don't remember the exact questions but they want you to answer stuff and um, if you want you can email me directly about it like if you have any questions about answering a particular question uh, i can tell you my email id you can email me directly um, or you can also text me on instagram uh, whatever is more convenient for you and i can tell you but it's not going to be a difficult task uh, it is just very basic questions about your basic motivation and i think the more important part is that they require you to uh, send them a video so you will have to speak uh, uh, you will have to answer one question through a video and you will have to upload that video to youtube but like not publicly only a private video on youtube so basically they'll also see how you're speaking and uh, your speaking skills and how literally like how motivated you are through your thoughts and speech and all of that so yeah that's that is there a criteria for like sharing your github wherever you've done projects related to it um not a criteria i mean you i can tell you my github profile but i don't usually upload a lot in github but i will upload this one because uh because you guys want the code to do this so there is no particular criteria you can take my github profile link and you can see all the projects that i have put over there although there are very few of them and yeah like everyone can see it's obviously open source public So, like, currently, what are you doing there? Um, like, as a student ambassador, do you work on the algorithms, or are you talking about Microsoft, or are you talking about GitHub? Yeah, yeah, the no, no, like the Microsoft thing. You okay? So, uh, as a student ambassador, it's not like we have any deadlines. We have, like, we have. Uh, I think we have. a deadline for very few things like it is very flexible i remember when i was interning somewhere i didn't have the time to uh, do anything at microsoft at all so i did not but then i have been using azure credits and stuff like basically i don't have gpu in my machine so i use azure credits to train my models on azure platform because they give us like a lot of gpu power it is enough for two to three of my projects at least Uh, and i have been through their learning path so i have learned about azure and being an ambassador you are supposed to learn about you know microsoft technologies azure fundamentals and then you know like people learn aws and then have their aws certifications and stuff so you can also get uh, a lot of azure certifications which will you know help uh, help your resume build strong enough in your learning technologies and stuff so that is what we do mostly but um, i have i'm also collaborating currently with uh, two to three like basically uh, there's this project initiative which was literally launched launched last month and i'm actually currently collaborating on a project i am the team lead and i have um, four other uh, members from uh, like basically i have three other members they are from worldwide i have someone from i think nigeria and then there is one girl from turkey and one is from india so we are all collaborating over a project and so yeah like we collaborate over projects and stuff like basically you have this community where you have similar people working on uh, stuff i hope that answers for you yeah yeah thank you okay great um Right. So, do we have any more questions? Uh, for the mathematics part, sorry for <laughs> clogging yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Like, um, like for the mathematics part, I typically heard like it's pretty tough math. I think you need linear algebra.